And welcome back to the wonderful stream here live from the Portage Curling Club Tavern United in the Canad Inns facility. We're um, bringing you games every draw, four draws a day from the Canada Inns Women's Classic here in Portage. And we have a great matchup here, A-side semi-final between Team Chelsea Carey and Team Chrissy Cadoran. Um, both teams have won their first two matches and they um, they meet up here with an opportunity to go on to the A-side qualifier. Um, the lineup for Team Carey, uh, they have their, their regular lead, Rochelle Brown just had a baby, um, I'm told about three days ago, baby Finn was brought to, brought into the their family and um, they have Brianne Knapp sparing at lead the lead position. Um, Team Cadoran is rocking their normal lineup, Chrissy Cadoran at skip, Joanne Curtis at third, Julia Weigel at second, and Laura Labonte at lead. Laura Labonte is the new member of the team this year, joining three established um, players on that team. Chelsea Carey's new look lineup has Sarah Wilkes at third, one of the absolute stars of the, rising stars of the game, um, maybe best known for for uh, winning a lot of, a lot of uh, events out in Alberta and the Alberta Scotties with Shannon Clybrink, but also filling in for Team Holman at second and winning. Um, a slam a couple years back. Dana Ferguson will be at second, but in the house, and she comes from the Val Sweeting team that uh, had a great last seven years and uh, twice lost the final of the National Scotties. That's a chance of coming down right now. And we get underway here with Brianne Knapp's center guard, which is extremely tight to the house, but stayed out by a couple inches great touch great judge there and Laura Labonte here will will throw her first rock looking for about a top four come around the guard Lines good Five. Whoa. Stone's on its way. It's it's tracking a little bit, which usually means it's it's all there for weight. Curling. This fantastic curl, ice is curling half. five to six feet good. from um, yeah, head ice maker Grego Wasco and his staff have been working tirelessly. Last weekend, Portage and Canadians hosted the men's classic, 24 team field. Um, team Brendan Botcher was the eventual winners after a hard fought playoff. And um, playing there, the ice was fantastic, and it appears to be again this week. We've got Brianne being asked for a little soft weight oh, run back. And they got caught a little bit there in the fresh pebble of the middle of the sheet. Both teams got a 16 rock practice and a draw to the button. Team Kadoran was uh, was the victor in that draw to the button challenge. They got the hammer here in the first end. But most of those shots are played from the edges to the middle, and in the middle of the sheet sometimes a little bit of fresh pebble for an end or two. And that seemed to just catch the, um, Team Carey on that shot. Labonte asked to draw to the wing here. P-liner better. <laughs> Trying to spread out their, their potential um, early deuce positioning. Draw looks a little bit heavy and Chelsea is able to uh, guide it through with some sweeping. We have eight sheets going of action um, on this draw in the Portage Curling Club. Um, I'll keep you updated as the scores get posted um, to make sure that you don't have to leave the stream to, to find any scores out. You can keep it tuned in here and we'll keep everything updated. Dana Ferguson the second. She joins Chelsea in the house in kind of a, a modified team lineup here. I'm playing a soft weight hit around the center guard. Dana with great weight control here. Removes the blue rock and sits out in the corner. Very, very nice little shot there. Yeah, 
Team Goodor in second, Julia Weagle here playing the takeout, looking for a hit and stick out in the wing here. Yep. Sweepers are on it hard here. It's moving a lot. Real hard. Hard. Hit and roll behind the corner guard. A little bit, mostly exposed, but a little bit near the guard. Nice little shot. Similar call to her first one here. Dana could even maybe get a hit and flop under under the cover, but uh, definitely wants to remove the rock. So we've seen a bunch down this path, so we're going to start to see it uh, get more kind of how it'll be the rest of the game. It's a touch straighter. Another great shot by Dana and uh, sticking around with that shooter. Julia here with a takeout, trying to hit and stick again. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Okay. Good. A touch on the high side, and then she rolls out. Now we'll see the first opportunity for Team Carey to use that slightly off-center guard. They started without hammers. So they're looking to um, to create either a steal or, or at least a force here in the first end and, and start to get that momentum turned around. Sarah Wilkes with a draw attempt here. Hard to get by. Hard to get by. Looks like it's going to be a pretty decent attempt. Might be sliding a bit deep. Hangs on just outside the back four, mostly covered. Really nice shot. Tim Gnorin is looking to follow it down. Preferably be about top four foot and, and potentially set up a deuce here with third Joanne Curtis. We called the Cadoran game last night and Joanne Curtis was uh, was on fire and kind of uh, turning a lot of ends in the in the positive for Team Cadoran, uh, leading to to a big victory over Team Team Ackland. Whoa! Trying to curl a bit. Trying to curl a little. Got to be buried. Where? Okay, only Jules. The draw Hi, hanging Jules. a bit. But it'll hard. snap now. Really hard. Go, go, go. Right back. Right to it. Go, 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 go. A little bit hard. A little bit hard. Good. Good job. Rock's in a tricky spot. It is accessible, but uh, jam is very possible. So, could play a run back, a freeze, yeah, or a I soft weight tap. Really, three options here for, for Sarah Wilkes. Chelsea's concerned this is possible, but she understands if she hits a half rock jam, she's going to leave a jam biting the forefoot and directly behind the guard, and all of a sudden this innocent end turns into a potential three. But a perfect shot will lead to a great chance at a steal, so they're going for it here. Yep. Yep. Don't want to. Hard. Or bumper. Hard. Really hard. Hard, hard. This one really took off and she wrecked, but rolled, I believe, into the house. Not the worst result. Um, you know, this now is a potential for a deuce, but... Um, a big end is, is not looking in play, and it's going to require a lot of finesse shots by Kadoran's team to, to capitalize on this opportunity for two. In turn, yeah. takeout for Joanne. Hard! 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 Really hard! hard. This hard. is going early. Hard! Go, 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 go. All right. A direct.
correct nose hit there. The way the rocks are positioned, it's a little bit awkward for Team Carey. They've got a hit shot rock for sure, but anywhere they roll their shooter to the left side of the sheet will uh, result in a double opportunity. And if they try and roll to the other side, they would jam. So um, they realize they're just going to hit and lie too and then kind of throw the ball back into the other team's court. Uh, no good aggressive shot here. Nice in turn, whoa, hit it on its way. Whoa, whoa. Little on off sweeping. Yep, yep. Hey. Roll. Good, you're good, you're good, you're good. Absolutely perfect roll there. <laughs> Chelsea Carey of Team Carey. They're lying too, but the double is very tricky to, uh, to execute and probably would involve losing the shooter. So Team Kadoran is going to look to play a nice hit and roll off this side eight foot rock and try and roll directly behind their blue stone or directly in front of the other yellow. And we've started our updates with Team Einerson um, with an, a deuce in the first end versus Team Jim. That's another A-side semifinal and a 2-0 lead already for Team Einerson. The sweepers are on this. This is curling. Curling hard. Looking to audible here. Hit the back one. Did not remain shot though, so uh, forces Carey to ch Team Carey to play an aggressive draw shot, which has has some value. But um, if if they're able to put it on the T line here, it would be a force or a steal for Team Carey. So Chelsea here is showing the reason that she's a former Scottish, Scottish champion and just, just a fantastic curler. She realized she's taking draw to the button path. Um, it might not end up being totally buried or they might have to finish it with a little bit of sweeping to get it buried, but they realize they want to make sure they put it on the T-line because any shot on the T-line is going to end with a positive result. Beautiful draw there. It's not perfectly behind the guard, but it, it makes a maximum degree of difficulty shot here with a soft draw, maybe a little bit of a draw to backing, but uh, fantastic start for Team Carey and, and a nice, nice uh, little bit of pressure they're putting on the other team. Now we're seeing slightly different ice here um, for Chrissy, and, and this will be this will be interesting to see if she gets the exact same path as the draw the button, which would be a path that a lot of rocks have been down and are, are going to be quick, or if she's she's gone out of that path and all of a sudden, uh, you know, that rock might stop and curl a little bit more. Curl, heads up, heads up, it has to curl. 
they seem to be off and on it. They seem to like the weight quite a bit. Perfect draw there and a, a nice single point for Team Kadoran in the first end. Um, we're going to have much, many more, much more curling from the Canons Class Women's Classic, and we'll be back after a quick message from the sponsors. Eat meat. Stay. Canad Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inn's. Call today at 1-888-33-CANAD or visit us right now at canadins.com. Welcome back to the Portage Curling Club, Canada Inn's Women's Classic here. Um, end two action between Chrissy Cadoran and Chelsea Carey. Um, a one in the first end for Chrissy Cadoran's team and uh, looking here from lead Laura Labonte to put a nice draw on the top of the house. Quick little get you updated. First of all, we got a uh, partner in the booth here, Jerry Gertz, has uh, joined us here starting this end. Welcome, Jerry. Hey, thanks, Gunnar. Uh, showed up uh, an end late. Uh, thought this was a two o'clock start, but uh, good to go for now. Should should be a good time. Um, one quick correction on sheet seven. Team Anderson got three in the first end. Very good at curling, not so good with the scoreboard, but it's a three nothing Anderson lead. And um, on sheet one, Laura Burtnick cracked a deuce in the first end against Vachon's team. And uh, that's playing in the second now. Yeah, we got uh, eight sheets going right now. Uh, lots of great action here at the uh, Cat End Ends uh, Classic uh, here in Portage the Prairie. Uh, you know what? If you're uh, in the area, you really should come down and check it out for you know, come check it out live. Yeah, we're just seeing it fill up here more and more every uh, every couple hours. There's uh, it gets even even more full up in the tavern watching uh, watching some of the best in the world uh, compete out on the ice. Yeah, this can't be a better facility. It's got to be the best facility on tour to come curl. Oh, it's just unbelievable. The only danger is you might never leave. That's the that's the only problem. But <laughs> Oh, isn't that pretty much a guarantee? Yeah, Hotel, well, connected to the bar, connected to the club, all yeah. in one facility. With you don't see daylight. They, they even have fitness in here now. It's, it's really the, the complete package. We're seeing a nice um, passive start here from uh, Team Carey's um, hammer play. We saw a draw to the forefoot and a hit and roll to the wing. And... Um, now with Brianne second, they're playing the corner guard. So this is just a, a real low stress, low risk way to set up uh, your corner guard and your deuce. This is all made possible with this new five rock rule. Um, you know, I'm assuming most people watching a curling stream have heard about this change, but if you haven't, it's allowing the team with hammer to have one more guard before the team without hammer can hit. Um, so we're seeing some very interesting new strategies and a lot more comebacks. The only downside is a lot of times um, when you're way up, you're forced to be aggressive. So we're seeing a lot of comebacks, but also a lot of blowouts. I think it's the perfect rule change for a sport. You know, it, it just changes behavior and how you approach the game. And in five rock rule, you have to continue playing the game. And what I mean by that is you have to play draws, you have to continue playing aggressive longer in the game. Yeah, for sure. It's a, it's, a, it's a fantastic change. I mean, it was definitely led kind of by some of the tour events making that change. And when when uh, when everybody got to see how great the change was, uh, now it's been adopted full stop, and basically all curling is five rock free guard zone now going forward. Just to quickly get you guys updated here on some of the other play, um, we, we now have a single for Team Ashley Howard versus Team Barb Spencer in the first end. And we have a deuce by Team Varnes over Team Barber in the first end for a 2-0 lead playing the second end. So here, this call is an aggressive call around the corner guard. So even though Chelsea applied a very defensive start, she clearly had aggressive plans. And uh, lots of teams would hit this top 12 rock placed by Kadoran's team. 
but she's going around the corner and trying to set up that early too. Yeah, there's definitely going to be some counter attack, some counter punch in this kind of situation here. You know, Kadorn went in to start, and the hit and roll to the side, delayed corner went up. It's, uh, you know, I, I like the placement of that Kadorn stone, but it does leave uh, Chelsea the free opportunity to use her corner guard here. Yeah, another they're keeping on the defensive plan and uh, trying to play the, this run back or at least appeal of this corner guard. There is a, a that just out of the house kind of not biter uh, on the wing that could be a jam potential here. So this shot's a little more difficult than it might normally be. Definitely a lot of ice for appeal here. Zeiss is moving a lot. Not big weight. I think she's looking at for the nice and hit and roll here. Look at this. Roll to the center. Oh, she she got the. Did make contact with the jam, but it bounced out and no harm done. Really, really nice little shot. The key, that roll to the middle is the center guard now. Now Chelsea has to deal with that. Yeah, no, it's another, I mean, two rocks in, in, in the, the old-fashioned control zone, if we want to call it that, um, that, that Chelsea has to deal with. But she does have a hit here to lie to, and um, as, long as, as long as this hit's made and Dana hasn't missed, uh, this is a game and a half we've been watching, and she's just been on fire. So she makes a nice shot here. Two is still in play. Beautiful little hit and roll, keeping the rocks separated. I like nine and a half here, Joe. Interesting to play off this one first. You know, there's definitely a double here if you play a, a hit on the top one. Yeah, the top one provides a few more <laughs> options, I think, um, where you could roll behind the center or roll, like, like Jerry says, make that double. Um, maybe with a firm weight, you yeah. kind of, anything on the one side would be good. Hard for peace. This rock's really taking hard. off a lot of early sweeping. Needs to at least eliminate the yellow. Keep going, keep going, keep going. We'll do that, but the shooter will roll away. Team Carey will have um, the decision whether they want to replace it out in the wing or if they want to come around the center and, and try and bring three into the mix. Team Carey is a it's very interesting blend because... Um, Rochelle Brown, as mentioned earlier, just ha just had her baby Finn and uh, isn't here. But but you effectively have two teams, two players that came from Val Sweeting's team, a, a very elite uh, women's team over the last two quadrennials, and then you have Sarah Wilkes who came from Shannon Clybrink team, and Chelsea Carey was skipping her own team. So you have three of the the three best Alberta teams probably, kind of are pieces amalgamating, and some have very defensive strategies and some have very aggressive strategies. So it's interesting to see how. Uh, how they decide to call the game here in the first couple months of this quadrennial. Yeah, I think Chelsea will tend to be a little bit more aggressive than most, but the, her front end will come from a, we're good, we're good, a we're good. more defensive style of game plan. Exactly, so it's, been, it's an interesting last, uh, yesterday yeah. watching them and again today just seeing how they balance those two things, but uh, you know, they didn't play a ton yet this year, but uh, it seems like uh, the results are trending in the right direction right now for Team Carey. Yeah, I think the real uh, sort of under, uh, what's the right word for that? Uh, the unknown on this team is probably Sarah Wilkes. Uh, I called her one of the best cur best players in Canadian women's curling an end ago. So that nobody I, knows about. So I, I think that, I, I think that I, I'm, uh, it's clear what I believe. I, at the trials last year, uh, I was working with the Botcher rink, and, and I got to match some rocks and evening practice and that sort of thing with um, Sarah Wilkes and I was just blown away by you know how pure the line of delivery was how how great her weight control was and and just you know even being on the ice for an hour is like holy crow you're going to be playing at the very top of this tour within within a year I would re suggest and that's exactly what's happened here yeah it's surprising she hasn't got the opportunity before now uh, she's been kind of super spare from time to time uh, with some teams uh, she won the uh, Champions Cup with uh, playing uh, second with uh, Rachel Holman a couple years ago. Yeah, 
And there's a beautiful judge and a beautiful shot there to split the house. Now that double that Jerry was mentioning isn't there, so now they've got to play the play this hit and roll behind the guard. But even if made, it's going to be back four, back eight kind of thing. And uh, not quite as good of an opportunity as was earlier in the end. Quick little update from sheet three as Team Lou from China managed to get a single in the first end versus Team Sherry Anderson. be interesting we've seen a lot of hits down this path so um, probably straightening up a little bit to how it will be the rest of the game most likely and seen a lot of over curls so it'll be interesting to see how this rock goes you know it's that kind of thing when on ice that curls as much as it has here you know you start to think okay I need to make sure that I'm full you know you'll be a little bit on the positive side and sometimes you just overdo it and uh, you know it'll run straight when you get hit weight but it'll curl a ton when you get your weight down a little bit. So having the right weight for every shot is really the most critical component. That was a be beautifully judged, a little bit of a curl sweep by Laura Labonte to finish that in there beautifully behind the guards. Almost full back four. Chelsea's now got to play a very delicate hit through a small port. So exactly what... Um, Team Ghidorah needed to, to turn this uh, momentum from a potential deuce into, you know, a force or even potentially a steal at this point. At a minimum, what it does is it groups everything in the middle. It's gonna, it's harder to score two or more when everything is congested in the middle. For sure. Even if the shot's made perfectly, there would be a, you know, some sort of double available. So it's a good, good, good result. Very good result. Just gets by the top. <laughs> Just <laughs> unbelievable. Missed the yellow by nothing. It touched, grazed the yellow, and uh, Blue will probably be throwing a lie too. Now we see yellow lying too and uh, playing a tough double here. Doran in the hack now, playing a uh, difficult straight back uh, double. Her shooter most likely won't make it into the house, so she's got to yep. hit it precisely on the nose. Sweeping hard early here. This looks like it's going to be curling a little bit more than they were looking for. Rolls to the side, 12 foot, and Team Carey will now have a draw. Near the eight footer better for two points. I got this tight right out of my hand. Again, here you see, see uh, just some of the, the, the knowledge here that Chelsea has. I mean, she can draw anywhere, but she takes the exact path she did for the draw to the button. Um, also, her path, will, if she was a little bit heavy, would lead her into her other yellow counter and, and potentially be some backing. So even though she expects to like make this draw perfectly, she's done a great job of, of making it as easy as absolutely possible to, to get her to and maximize her chances so really nice work here
Chelsea settles in for this draw for two. Line's good. A little bit of a clean early is a good sign. Line's good, holding pretty nice. We're probably past it. We need it. Four one. That draws nicely into the four foot circle, so it'll be a two for Team Carey. We kind of got that set up fairly early and held it all the way through. So we have a 2-1 lead after two ends. Team Gadorn will bounce back here with the hammer playing the third end. Um, we have much more curling from the Canada Inns, Canada Inns Classic in Portage La Prairie. And uh, we'll be right back after a few uh, pictures of our sponsors, I guess, we'll go with. And we're back to the Portage Curling Club upstairs in the Tavern United booth. Uh, fantastic curling for the Canada Inns Women's Classic. We have a 2-1 lead for Team Carey versus Team Cadoran. Um, some quick updates from other sheets. Team Muirhead has been um, been really looking very confident at this event and uh, blanked the first end and then got a 3 to take a 3-0 lead on Team Fujisawa playing the third end. Um, and Team Gim made an absolutely unbelievable triple, big weight triple takeout and stick for three to wow. tie it up for Zinerson, 3-3 three, three after two. Really good. Yeah, there's been two beautiful guards by Brianne Knapp trying for the tight center and ending up with the super tight to the house center. Um, no touch, about a foot in front of the house or less. So Team Kadorn, just like in the first end, is going to play top four around the center. Be very interesting to see if they make it. Last time Team Carey played a little soft weight run back. It'll be see if uh, that same start occurs again Hi, here. Good. Looks like she's definitely yeah. going around here. Well, so for, for the Kadoran team, it's definitely been a tough start to the season. Uh, they're ranked in the uh, 30s uh, to start the year, give or take. And uh, really had some expectations Hi, this go, year to go. compete and try and really find their right way right into go, the go, slams. Go, 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 go. But uh, six and thirteen record coming into this, it's uh, been a a real struggle. They, but they've won two in a row here, into an A qual a semifinal. Um, you were talking about uh, to me earlier about something that kind of set them off. They were playing uh, uh, Sayaka Yoshimura in a qualifying game at the uh, Stu Cells Oakville Tankard, and uh, really had a bad finish to that. Yeah, and then uh, then I think they've. Uh, since then, the results haven't been as good. But early in the season, they were they were showing some good form. And here, watching them last night, they definitely have, you know turned that around with the two great performances to start this event. And I think they're really excited. Um, this is a team that played mainly in Ontario, has has uh, you know competed hard at, the, at that level. And this is this is one of their big trips for the year. One of the events they're they're keying to play well in. And the fact that they're starting out so strong here with um, two big victories and. And in a tight one here against Team Carey, has got to got to do a lot of lot for their confidence, and uh, we'll see how this game plays out. Yeah, I think they did a team bonding bowling night after going 0-3 at the Stu Cells Toronto Tankard before their final game. They got a win there, and then uh, two more wins here. They're on a three-game winning streak. Okay, probably just a foot more. Um, many of you might not know much about this team, but uh, Chrissy's been a longtime competitor in Ontario, been to uh, provincials, made the playoffs on multiple occasions. You know, and, and this team has really put some work in. You've got Julia Weagle, sister of Lisa Weagle, so you probably recognize that name. Uh, Joanne Curtis has uh, been uh, slid into third on this team, and they added Laura Labonte at the beginning of the year you know, to try and build upon the strong year they had last year. Very interesting to see from Team Gary here. They they switched. And now with a one-point lead, you'd expect more defensive play, but they've actually, instead of playing that little run back, 
that they did in the first, they, they chose to play the corner freeze. It was well executed, and um, Kadoran's team has gone back uh, back eight here around the center guard. So even though um, Kadoran's lying two with hammer, which you think is a great position, the middle's already closing down on them, and one good draw here by Team Carey could, uh, could really make the scoring area small. Yeah, this is what the five rock is going to lead to. It's... It's the kind of thing when you don't have hammer, you have to play aggressive now. And uh, if you don't, what's going to happen is that your opponent's going to kind of have a, a free roll, free wheel at, at a deuce. And so you're going to see teams play more aggressive without, put some more pressure on, put more rocks in the middle, and that's what Carey's doing right here. Yeah, and this is a natural progression for for um, Team Carey. Chelsea loves that, that aggressive around the center strategy. So. Uh, That'll be strong for her. We have a, a big update here on uh, after a blank end, Team Rizzo cracked a four-ender in the second end against Team Rachel Burtnick to lead 4 nothing after two okay. yeah. ends of play. Yeah, another Ontario team. Off to a bit of a tough start this year. I think they lost their first five or six games of the year, uh, including the Oakville uh, Major League. Not something you'd expect from a team that is essentially uh, you know, half of Sherry Madaw's old team and a uh, player from uh, Jacqueline Harrison. You know, players who are playing in the slams uh, fairly regularly as well. Yeah, that's a really, really strong team. That's definitely a team that uh, is taking more of a curling life balance approach than they had maybe in past years, but uh, just tremendous talent. And then you know that you're going to see them, uh, those results continue to improve as the year goes on and, and they get more and more reps. A little bit light there on the freeze attempt from Julia Weagle, um, which will now allow a um, combination hit to be played here by Dana Ferguson. Looks like they're going to talk about it here. I think I like that better than putting it. Yeah, I think it's one of those shots that once Dana sees, I think she'll, she'll like a little more than she did from the hack. Well, let's listen in here. Yeah, it looks like Carrie doesn't really like that uh, that guard out there. Or sorry, that uh, tight uh, Cadoran stone. Yeah, very interesting discussion there. and They kind of have a, a different grouping there with Sarah playing a lot of third and uh, in her career and Dana playing more second, but Dana being in the house. So the three of them that are kind of down there um, had a good discussion and came to this decision. Perfectly played. Nice little hit and stick there. Thanks. Just further shrinking the uh, the paths into that scoring area. It was definitely my quietest of my normals. Three. Quick little update of the second end. Um, Team Vachon scored one to be down 2-1 playing the third end against Laura Burtnick. And Team Barber scored one to be down 2-1 without after two versus Team Varnes. Some weight hard. here out of the hands of Julia hard. Weagle. Hard on the blue, hard on the blue. Quick, hard quick. In. Clearing yeah. shot there. Just needed to hit that first one a hair thinner, and you would have seen the continuation all the way right into the forefoot, likely. 
That's that's my favorite shot in, in the game. Yeah, the, the old, old double, double peel click and, and sneak and in keep, there. Yeah. yeah, keep on going. Yeah, nothing better when someone throws, whips one down there like a little seven second peel, hits a guard, hits another guard, and then ends up on the T line. You're like, nice draw weight there, perfect, <laughs> perfect throw. We've got. Oh, yep. This one's starting to move. Yeah, I think this is starting to turn out to be a nice, comfortable end here for Kadoran. A good shot on that hit. Yeah, she. I think she really needs to think about playing the hit here, though. If she was to hit that top yellow one, maybe make the double, roll over to the side. You know, she'd be looking at lying one. Three, four. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely on that same page. If nothing else, um, it keeps the middle open. You know, make sure you score. Yeah, this, this draw is pretty good, but a perfect draw would just lead to Team Carey playing another perfect draw and, and no uh, no scoring area. And uh, anything that isn't perfect is going to be leave uh, Chrissy with a very tough shots coming down the stretcher. Yeah, this is the trap you get into in the five rock rule. You know, you get kind of sucked into this when uh, your opponents are playing aggressive against you. Pretty close out here on the draw. Slashing in there at the end. Yeah, freezes onto the back one, bit of a corner freeze. That'll do the job. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice shot and it, it forces uh, Siri Wilkes here to, to follow it down. What it does do is they've kind of got a, they got a, to go to school on Team Kadoran shot, so um, they should have a good idea of the speed here now. The challenge with this, though, that is if, if uh, Wilkes makes a good shot, that four-foot area is going to be even more condensed, and it's going to be even tougher to score. Huge sweep here. This one's definitely got a different line. It's very close to the guard. Just a little light on that spot, it looks like. Yeah, that might have just got there, but if it was thrown any harder, it would have got comfortably by the garden right into that button area. Still a shot that uh, has a lot of value as it's blocking um, the path in for more for more blue counters. like we're going to have a little bit of a conversation here. They're really talking between that. playing that hit and roll or the straight draw in. Yeah, I think they're probably going to end up coming to the draw. It's, it's not that they don't like the draw shot. It's just that of their options, I think it's the best option. Uh, that's... Yeah, good point there from uh, Joanne. You know, she just threw that shot. The other bonus here is you can always just kind of rub off that yellow stone and, and kind of flip into the middle at the same time, too. This, this end is really, a, you know, an adjustment uh, both ways. You know, teams are, you know, changing uh, game plans on the fly based on opponents' uh, misses or makes. And now you see here Kadoran go, going really going hard with the draw game here. I think it's uh, you know a great opportunity right now to get uh, two or more. That's a big shot. This will swing a bunch. She's out there far enough. Her rocks are definitely traveling a little differently than Sarah Wilkes' rocks are. 
Yeah, no, those three shots all kind of had different different tracks that they went down. It's kind of a race into the button here, then. I think so, yeah. ever tap there as well, I guess. What do you like, sir? Yes, yeah, If you're a first thought, which is. But then she can run that. Okay. I don't know that we can help ourselves. We can potentially not help ourselves. The only problem is you're going to roll away. And then she just does it again. I think we gotta play on one of these right now, probably. I don't mind trying that one as long as I leave my shoe there, it's still blocking. I like that. It's a pink. It's high nose. Yeah. Into here. Yeah, I think you just have played it. Well, I mean, so, so Frozen's probably better because she's rounding it, right? But if you just leave it here, she just smashes it. Yeah, right to its best, I think. Okay, cool. This is the draw. Yeah. I got to at least back line probably. Yeah. So I'm thinking like here. So with two options to run here, Carrie really can't take either one away or tap or whatever for Kadoran. So she's actually going to try and get there first. She's going to throw a little bit of a heavy draw weight, tap her Yellowstone into the forefoot, and force Kadoran to have to actually play some sort of a run. Yeah, it looks, uh, it's always a tricky shot though, playing the the tap on ice that curls so much, um, getting that broom in the right place, but if she's able to get something to the top of the button or the back of the button, as they're suggesting, uh, good chance to turn this into a steal. So you've seen uh, the recent uh, rule change they're experimenting with at the World Cup, first used in the uh, Elite 10, the timed end, rather than timed yeah, game. Yeah. You know, yeah. what, do you, what do you think about that? You played Whoa. under that in the uh, in both Whoa. slams. Oh, yes! Really hard! Tight for line here. It looks oh, very hard, close. Hard, 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 hard! Far! Bit of an over curl. Looks like yellow is shot, though. Yeah, it ran into her own. Might bring a big into end into play, but good chance for a steal. Yeah, there's definitely a, a run double there for two right now. Or sorry, for three even. I just want to listen to the players talk here, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that time question in a second. in the back four foot so Chrissy's looking for a tap on the blue just off center line and um, promote it up somewhere into the four foot if she happened to run into the yellow rock back for the shot that might leave them lying too but anywhere in there would be good yeah this is uh, totally a line shot you know if they're a little heavy early you brush it accordingly uh, if you're throwing if the right weight's coming here you kind of let it curl up and you, you know you tap it straight back into a good position Looks like line's a little tight hard. here. Sweepers are going hard. Yep, hard, hard! Right to it, guys, hard! Hard! hard. It's gonna be close. Hard. I really like that position for that stone. Carrie cannot play a run on her own outside stone there. 
because it very easily, the shot will jam onto her own stone. Two fantastic taps, very tough shots to make, and both skips uh, made beauties there, so it's actually forcing Chelsea to play a third one. Yeah. A little bit more precision on this shot here as well. For Cadorn, it looks like the two rocks and the 12-foot though are now kind of corner locked to each other. She's not going to be able to use either of those stones should Carrie make a good good shot here. Yeah, her roots in are pretty limited. Um, again, it's possible that uh, Team Carry could actually throw a well-placed guard and basically uh, guarantee a one-point in. So that might be an option. They, they definitely, uh, their back two yellows are... are um, queued up for a double if there's a route to them so this shot uh, has the most upside but also comes with some risk Chelsea carries last in the third end here Big brush here. Hard, hard. Really nice shot. Beautiful little shot there. Carry now lies two in the four foot area. And does not look like Kadorn has any kind of double here. I mean, we just tap this back. Either we play this, high side. No, that is that turned out absolutely beautiful. If the yellow had bounced any further, there might have been a triple for four even. But uh, the way it worked out, it uh, it's locked in there pretty good. Yeah, those two two Kadoran stones, top 12 foot right now, are a problem for Chrissy. Probably pretty similar weight to what you just threw, just to push this back. Very similar shot to the one she played in the first end. I'm just looking for that draw tap here. Got to first make sure the draw, because I believe it was line two now. But um, line's good, weight's good. Bounce it about a rock and, and score with a single point. As she lines up here, just a couple of very quick updates. Um, sheet one, Vachon gets a, steals a single to tie at 2-2, playing the fourth. Fujisawa with a deuce back to be down 3-2, playing four without. Um, Team Spencer cracks a five-ender to take a 5-1 lead against Howard. As Chrissy Godoran settles in for the last rock of the third end in our feature game. Close. Yep. Hard. Sweepers on right away. Line's tight here. Doesn't look like she has a lot of weight either, unfortunately. This is not going to be good. This rock will wreck. Looks like a steal of two for uh, Chelsea Carey here in the third end. Yeah, it'll be a 4-1 four, four lead going into the fourth, and we'll be back uh, to the Canada Inns Women's Classic in a moment after a brief message from the sponsors. Eat! Meet. Stay. Play! Can Add Inns Destination Centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Can Add Inns. Call today at one 33 can add or visit us right now at canadins.com. And welcome back to the Portage Curling Club, the Can Add Inns Women's Classic here. We have a 4-1 lead for Team Carey over Team Kadoran in our feature game. And we have lead Brianne Knapp being asked to put one nicely into the top four foot here. 
for the first stone of the end. They're cleaning it. The rock looks pretty close. Well, this thing's coming into the house. We'll update um, Team Rizzo with another steal of two to take a 6 nothing lead on Team Rachel Burtnick playing the fourth end. Team Einerson held to a single and a 4-3 lead playing four against Team Jim. And on sheet eight, it would be a single point for Varnes to take a 3-1 lead playing the fourth end without hammer. Perfect draw to the back of the button there by Brianne Knapp. And lead Laura Labonte being asked for a little hit and roll to the corner here. Nine. Oh. Yep. Hard. Hard. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we have a sweeper down. Sweeper down. Julia Weagle with a little tripped over the hog line. I saw a jump at her. But a beautiful hit and roll to the corner, and um, Team Carey will be forced to, to hit it back. Team Cadorn will have a, a nice safe corner guard that they're looking to, to place. Kind of how Team Carey created a deuce in the second and they're trying the same tactics here. Quick update, Sherry Anderson with a deuce in the second end to take a 2-1 lead over Team China. careful with it but it looks like a nice nice tight corner guard holy crow that slid a long way fast and lots of curl on this ice here this weekend it is so that's why you see such a huge field and such a diverse field people coming from all over to Portage the Prairie Manitoba to play on the great Greg Wasco's ice he's really managed to make an arena type um, Ice surface in a curling club here, you're seeing five to even six feet of curl in places. Great speeds and um, the ability to make all the shots. The players really love that ability and I think that's key to, to growing a great event is having great ice crew. Yeah, it's something I remember talking with uh, Trent Ward about is that uh, when Ken Eddins took over this event, they really wanted to make an investment in, the, in it and uh, you know make it one of the great events on tour and, and ice conditions were something that uh, and it was mentioned in the past, and so they brought in Greg Owasco. He's been doing this for many years now, and, uh, you know, his ice uh, is some of the best in the game. And, you know, right here in Manitoba, you know, there's such a great tradition of, uh, of great ice makers. For sure, and I mean, <laughs> just like in general, the players have, you know, come in groups and bunches, uh, so do the ice makers. And... Um, Hans Wuthrich was one of, one of the kind of people that got it started in, in this area, and then... Uh, Mark Shurek, who does all of the slam ice making, and Greg Owasco, um, who does just all kinds of events all over the place. It, it all kind of uh, leads from that, that cluster, but great ice makers, and as a player from Manitoba, it's beautiful that you get to play on great ice so often. So the second corner guard goes up. Here they're looking to hit the low guard. The high guard on this ice with this much curl is, is tough by itself to create the the points as you can come around it and make a takeout. So the low guard is definitely the danger rock and uh, Team Carey's trying to remove it with Dana Ferguson here. Another great opportunity to lie too as well and, and potentially get the force here as well. 
beautiful shot. I'm not sure I've seen Dana Mass. She's been absolutely on fire here um, through a couple games. And um, that shot brought the play back to the center, which is the whole goal of a three-point lead and no hammer here for Team Carey. Doran's trying to deal with its two middle rocks. A beautiful double takeout is made. They played a, a fair bit of weight there, and the shooter rolled out, which will allow Team Carey to just run up there and peel the corner guard and potentially lead to a blank here and continue to keep that lead. So open house now. This is looking like a blank coming down the line. For sure, but we've got an interesting game here of cat and mouse where uh, Tim Gidoran's going to throw the corner and, and Chelsea will keep peeling it to a point, but eventually um, a move would be made. So how, how long can you keep throwing this corner? Probably one or two shots. Up three. I imagine, you know, I don't think Chelsea's going to fall for that. So you never know. Never know when, when she'll switch gears. She's a very aggressive player, so it's always interesting when you're playing against aggressive players. Sometimes you, as a more defensive player, you, you don't expect that aggression and they can jump out and bite you, so. Quick little update. Um, Team Howard got it, was forced to a single and is now down 5-2 to two without Hammer playing the fourth end against Team Barb Spencer from Manitoba. Sarah Wilkes a little bit outside on release there and just missed the peel. This is the opportunity Team Kudorn needed. Not quite you what you would expect uh, here. Definitely a break for Kudorn. finish they're saying they're they're sweeping from the uh, from the top side, high side of the rock top side of the rock um, it, wherever the feet are they're trying to make the rock go the other way so as their feet as the rock was coming in the house we're on the left side they're trying to get the rock to curl more to the right you see now with the advent of mixed doubles you see a lot of time they uh, the players are pivoting around and they're using one sweeper to uh, sweep in two different directions even on the same shot Here's that aggression I was talking about out of Team Carey. Uh, we're going to see a freeze here, and a well-made freeze would, would go a long way to creating a force, but... Um, the risk here comes with not making it well, whether you over-curl and leave Kadoran sitting shot. Chrissy will then have the opportunity to corner freeze on it, and three will definitely be in play. For sure, whereas the more conservative approach would be to just smash the, the uh, guard, try and make that run back, but any smash of the front guard would max Team Kadoran out at two, and... Um, still protect that lead, so we'll see what happens here. Power down. Has that happened before? No. <laughs> well, we still got picture at least. What's that? 
We lost power. Yeah. Oh. Did you kick it out? Little uh, technical difficulties there. Uh, power plug, I think, was uh, unplugged. So he lost a bit of us for a little bit. But uh, we're back again. We saw the freeze attempt come up a little bit late in the top eight foot there. And um, a chance potentially for two uh, is now on for Team Kadoran. Big scrub here to get second shot rock. Got to get this deep enough to take away the uh, double opportunity here. Just ran out of rings. Still a useful stone for Kadoran because I think uh, had they not got in the rings, I think Chelsea plays a little tap up, a little uh, uh, maybe even a run. Yeah, but I think the fact he got in really uh, makes Chelsea change to a more defensive shot. So, so that was a great sweep to to make that happen. Um, that's the difference you see people. You know, more and more the players are training harder and harder to make sure that they can you know, make that effort to uh, to make the little differences in the shots. Again, we're seeing just Chelsea's um, awareness of paths and, and, and situations. She Dana played almost his exact shot on a little tight corner guard, so she knows the weight and line. So she should have a good idea of where to put the broom for herself here to hit uh, two thirds of this stone and either make the double or at least roll into to that four foot area. Not what they were expecting out of that spot, that's for sure. That thing really uh, moved a lot more. You, typically on ice like this, you don't see so much curl when you start to up the weight. I think that path just curls a lot. So this is like practice. Some good uh, commentary there out of Chrissy. Uh, you know, she saw that happen to her draw. Then again, uh, Chelsea on her hit. So. Uh, they definitely saw the same thing happen there on both shots. Yes, yeah, so let's take a little more ice here now and uh, and draw to the same spot. Another option here would be just taking the draw to the button path on the out turn side or her in turn as a lefty, but she's going to stick with what she what she feels she knows. But uh, it is a small area she's throwing into here. Needs to be precise. Last shot of the fourth end here. Draw a full eight foot for two for Team Kadoran and to get back into this match. Looks perfect. Light little dust from the front end, and we're going to be a two point end for Team Kadoran. Four to three now for Team Carey's lead with Hammer playing the fifth end when we come back to the Canad Inns Women's Classic from Portage La Prairie after a quick moment with our sponsors.
Well, we're back here, fifth end, live from the Tavern United broadcast booth here at the 2018 Canad Inns Women's Classic from Portage of Prairie, Manitoba. My name's Jerry Gertz, uh, joined by Jason Gunlickson. Uh, commentary uh, all weekend here. Every draw covered of the Canad Inns Women's Classic. This is uh, pretty amazing to see uh, such great curling and the opportunity to kind of catch a little bit of every, uh, every draw. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, filtering through the teams on you know on the feature sheet, and uh, it's great to uh, to see so many people supporting the stream and uh, and watching the matches. Right here, we have our match uh, between Kerry and Kadoran is now four three for Team Kerry, and Kerry has Hammer. Team Kadoran's uh, lead, Laura Labonte, put up a nice center guard here, and um, Team Kerry goes to the wing right off the bat here, trying to keep keep that middle open as long as they can. See this one, see, um. Yeah, this is a, a tactic I think you'll start to see more and more in this game. Team with Hammer trying to keep the play open, try not to get into too much trouble in the middle. Carey, uh, definitely a veteran uh, of this game. But, uh, you know, I think this is a change for her. And I think that, you're, I think that uh, again, they brought, Chelsea's created a different team with some players as we talked about earlier from different backgrounds and I, and I think they're they're realizing that um, you know there's they all all their backgrounds had some strengths and how, how they're gonna mesh that together will be very interesting as the year goes on but I wouldn't say that's a normal Chelsea carry call that we've seen in past years that that might be a call that uh, you know maybe Dana or Sarah's bringing into the mix more so Kador and calling the hit on the outside here I think at this point down one without I'd rather see her go around the middle or th even throw a second center guard Yes, this team's very patient and um, r really, uh, you know, is is waiting for the opportunity to come from the other team. And last end, they kind of got that uh, with the peel flash from Sarah that led to their deuce. So, you know, I think it works for them. I think that's the challenge is uh, you don't upgrade the view of difficulty too much or, or you don't make enough shots to, to compete. But as you play better and better teams, you also need to up the view of difficulty because when you're down, you need to make some things happen, and, and this would be an opportunity to come around the center and make things happen. It still feels like a close game, but in reality, you're in a pretty big hole down one without Hammer. Yeah, especially in the second half of the, uh, the game to a team that's, that's much higher ranked than you. I mean, your win percentage is starting to drop, and, and, and maybe a more aggressive approach could be the option, but uh, we'll see how this plays out. Yeah, I think the numbers come into somewhere around 25% uh, chance of winning the game here for Kadoran. So. You know, I think it's time to start rolling the dice. Yeah, we'll see when they think that's the case. And uh, just a quick little, quick little update on uh, sheet seven. Uh, this gym, gym team from China, uh, from Korea, sorry, um, Skipper has made two absolute beauties, and this led to a deuce and a five-four lead after four ends versus Team Einerson. Um, team Barber cracked a three-ender to take a four-three lead over Team Varnes without Hammer playing the fifth end. And team Loot from China managed to uh, score a three-ender to be up two without playing four, playing five against Team Anderson. So the winner of that uh, game on sheet three uh, between uh, Liu and Anderson will play the winner of our game here in the a qualifier. Yes, for sure. And uh, Sherry's team uh, has been looking looking pretty strong here in this event, and uh, really f a really fun team that just loves to curl and. Uh, Loves to compete, loves the, the battle and, and getting um, all they can handle here from this Chinese team. Yeah, it's really been interesting to see the Chinese program this year. Uh, four women's teams, four men's teams traveling uh, around the world playing the game after I don't think they ever put more than two teams in play. And then of course there's several junior teams also on the circuit now too and uh, you know, they're really making an effort to uh, invest in the game ahead of the 2022 20, Olympics. For sure, and you see more and more countries um, having a little bit of depth. I had an interesting conversation with a, a player who had been on tour for a few, a few years um, here, uh, and, you know, we kind of started out playing on tour around the same time, and, and uh, the difference is now where some of these countries had four curlers, and that was it. Yeah. Um, now they have 40, 50 um, top players and, and a player who's maybe never come to North America comes over and um, starts putting up good results right away. It, clearly there's more development than just that one team model that some of the countries were using 
you know, one, even two, three quadrennials ago. Yeah, you look at uh, the Chinese program and what they did to select their four national teams this year was they had a uh, 11 or 12 team play down in the men's side, same on the women's side. And I think mixed doubles, they had as many as 30 teams playing oh, wow. down for eight spots. And so they played a triple knockout, similar to the East Coast triple that they use, where if you win, you still drop into the B and into the C. And what ended up happening is, is the four best teams that came out of this were handed their, uh, here you go, travel the world. Oh, wow, what, a, what an opportunity. What a, what a life-changing bond spiel, that's for sure. Yeah. So, and then the rest of the teams will continue to compete uh, domestically and, and continue to train. But uh, for the four teams, uh, men and four team uh, on the women's side, it's a, it's a massive opportunity to get out there and compete. Yeah, here we're seeing a pretty open end. And uh, as Team Kadoran didn't play around the center early and, and chased on the wing and unfortunately got a rollout, Team Pierre ran up and uh, smacked the center guard here and is, is really trying to, would love a blank. One up with playing six is a fantastic spot. So that's what they're working towards, and Team Kadoran keeps at replacing that center guard over and over again, hoping for even a half miss to uh, to give themselves an opportunity for some aggressive play. Nice throw, a nice peel here. <laughs> Quick update from sheet two in another A side uh, semi final here. Fujisawa with a steal of two to take a 4 3 lead on Eve Muirhead in uh, the battle of two. Uh, non-Canadian teams that are very high ranked and uh, with Eve kind of coming back from, from an off-season surgery, I believe this is her second event, Jerry? Yeah, she played uh, two weeks ago at the Stockholm uh, Ladies' Cup. She may have played at the Masters. This might be her third uh, event now. So it seems like she's, uh, her play is probably rounding into form and the team's, uh, I'm sure, excited to have a talent such as Eve back in the lineup. Yeah, she's definitely the leader of that team. And, of course, this is a rematch of the bronze medal game from uh, the Olympics last February as well, where, uh, you know, the Japanese side kind of came out and surprised Eve a little bit, I think, and, and uh, it was a massive uh, uh, win for uh, Japan to get their first ever Olympic uh, medal. Oh, there you go, Jerry. You got the little double peeling in the house. There you go. One of your favorites. Beautiful little shot because that, that corner guard that was almost out of play was always potentially going to be an opportunity on the last shot to uh, to get a sneaky force for uh, Team Gadoran, but now with it removed, uh, the blank should be more straightforward. Chrissy Gadoran settling in the hack here for her second last shot of this end. Looking for an intern hit and stick on this biter for Team Carey. Situation. They really want to make this roll in because you don't want to leave this for Chelsea to draw around. Just gets in as a biter. Real nice shot. This is a nice little spot because now Chelsea, um, when you're throwing this hit, you want to make sure you make contact. So you, you are somewhat likely to nose hit it. And if it was a nose hit did happen, Chelsea's rock wouldn't be in the house. And um, Chrissy would get the opportunity to play a little come around draw and turn this into a sneaky force, which uh, would be very good. Um, obviously down one without your would like a steal, but even a force uh, help, helps your uh, route to getting back to in control of this match. Is 
It's a little different here. Chelsea being a righty versus uh, Chrissy's left-handed throw. It's a little different line of delivery here, so. Beautiful little roll to the center line like there. Yelling. <laughs> like the, I feel it was totally found out. Yeah. I was saying hard to Me too. I just was laughing because I felt like I couldn't even hear my own voice. I was just waving my hand. Open hit and stick here for Chrissy Couture and anywhere in the house would uh, force team carry to make the blank, which is always always um, an easy but high pressure shot. a lot of ice here for this uh, blank attempt so must be planning on throwing fairly fairly solid and fairly sharp on the release yeah this is a spot where the mistake here needs to be nose hitting it and staying yeah for keep, sure keep control of the end so you know just tighten it up a hair make sure you up the weight a little bit and uh, you know try and get that roll out Super's on it right, right oh. away. Might be a little tight. Oh, you're not going the other way. And uh, we're going to have one point here for Chelsea Carey. Plenty more to come from the Canada Inns Women's Classic. Uh, we will be back in just a moment. Eat. Meet. Stay. Canad Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inn's. Call today at 1-888-33-CANAD or visit us right now at canadins.com. Welcome back to the 2018 Canad in, Can Inns Women's Classic from the Portage Curling Club. We have Chelsea Carey scoring a single on a blank attempt in the fifth end. Playing six now, leads five to three over Chrissy Kadoran. Kadoran with the hammer. Team Carey lead, or fill in lead here, Brianne Knapp. Um, playing a draw to the top of the forefoot. Their regular lead, Michelle Brown, um, just had a baby. Baby's name is Finn, I'm told it's a 
Finn's a few days old and uh, all, all is well at home and the team uh, definitely really, really, uh, you know, is, is uh, excited to have the, their team, their fill-ins, but uh, can't wait to have Rochelle back. Uh, she's really a unique personality on tour and uh, she just brings a lot of joy to the team. So you could tell just in the pregame talks with the team that uh, they couldn't wait for, for Rochelle to be back. Yeah, Pooks and Fergie are kind of a uh, legendary sweeping duo um, from the uh, Team Sweeting days, and uh, they stuck together, and, you know, they're kind of a tandem duo uh, personality. For sure, they'll, they'll look forward to her. You know, obviously great contributions to the player, but also uh, just the personality and what she brings to the team as a whole. Uh, they'll be looking for Rochelle back uh, at some point this season. So Kadoran here again uh, trying to play the uh, delayed corner. I don't mind this down two. You know, you, you know it, it's almost you make a good corner guard and you've got a great chance of scoring an easy two. Yeah, down two, down two here I don't mind as much. Down three it was, it was a bit defensive I thought, but uh, it worked so well I'm not going to say anything bad about it that uh, it, it played out quite nicely for them, so uh, yeah, I think we'll the see how this does. Yeah, I think the only thing out of Kadoran's game, I'd really like to see them play more aggressive without the hammer here. Um, put some more pressure on their opponents and I, they'll generate a lot of steals. Their hammer play though is is uh, very strong so far. I think uh, you know it's probably what's helped set them up and get them to this point. One. A little update on uh, sheet right beside us here. Barb Spencer uh, looked like she had a, a potential double for another bundle. Uh, over curled a little bit and spun across the top, giving up a steal. That's uh, Ashley Howard now cuts that down 5-3 there, playing five. A quick update from the far end of the building on sheet eight, Rhonda Varnes with a deuce to go up 5-4 without hammer against Team Barber. Also, Team Einerson was held to a single in the fifth end, so it is now 5-5 with Team Gim with the hammer here playing the sixth end. Yeah, that Gim team is a team that I don't think uh, a lot of people necessarily recognize. The Unjung Kim team, silver medalists from the Olympics this year, uh, failed to win their national qualifier. So it looks like they've had some funding taken away, and we haven't even seen them in North America yet this year. Yeah, it's definitely again back to the uh, you know some of these countries that used to have one team max um, now have multiple teams, and you know the the A team supposedly isn't on tour, but. Uh, some of the other teams are still out getting solid results, so. Yeah, uh, there's, there's a pretty uh, strong rivalry between the provinces and Korea. They don't all get along very well. You know, think about it as a way, uh, you know, let's say Manitoba and Alberta. Yep. You know, it, the rivalry is strong within Canada. You know, I would, I would uh, say that in Korea that they take that to a whole new level between the uh, different regions. So, uh, you know, really interesting to see the, the different groups. You've got uh, Minji Kim, who won the, uh, the championship on the women's side, still junior aged. And then the uh, Gim team is from another uh, province. And then uh, Kim, uh, Unjun Kim's team's from uh, Wisung. So uh, some pretty good rivalry there. Some skilled teams out of Korea that uh, we're gonna see some different names uh, throughout the next few years as well. Nice little hit and roll there, and uh, and and this has been a beautiful little start for Team Gador. And um, they've got the corner guard up potentially to use later. They've got one buried behind Team Carey's center guard, and uh, Dana's got a nice delicate hit here to play, uh, try and get at that shot rock. Beautiful shot. Honestly, Dana is just on fire for this team, and it is making all the difference. The, you know, the the ends that are set up good, she continues to apply the pressure, and the ends that maybe haven't been set up perfectly, uh, she keeps making big shots to uh, get Team Carry into a good situation. Quick update from sheet six, where Joanne Rizzo has taken a few more and is now up at nine to one on Team Rachel Burtnick um, in that match. Nice 
nice little roll away from Julia Weigel here. Chelsea's face forced to uh, chase out on the wing here. And unless a great roll is made right to center line, uh, that'll open up their chance for Team Vidoran to play a draw around one of the well-positioned guards they have available. Great shot by Sarah Wilkes. Got the spin back at the end to be mostly covered around the center. The only concern here, she's showing the wrong side out. So the hit and roll under the corner is possible. But at the same time, again, you know, when you don't have hammer, the more you can bring the play to the middle, congest the middle, it's going to be tougher to score two here for Kadoran. The other thing is that Rock is absolutely perfectly positioned as a steal point. So if there was a wreck here on this on this yellow guard, um, the opportunity to switch to offense would be very, very high for uh, Team Carey. For Kadoran here, I really like back 12 weight. Just tap it back. If you ever over curl chip the guard, you might roll yourself underneath the corner guard and, and really put some pressure. As Jerry says, that Joanne Curtis comes down and suggests the exact same <laughs> shot, so I think they're on that wavelength. Well, is it just it, right, knows this and just tap it back here. Yeah. I think here, Joe, is a nice relief. Okay. I think it's... The important thing here is to make sure you throw that weight that you're looking for, and you've got to collide with one of those two yellows. If you were to throw it a little heavy and miss on the outside, uh, the pressure is going to get is going to mount quite a lot as uh, Team Carey is going to be able to stack another one in behind the center guard. You know what, I think as a team with Hammer here and in Kadoran's position right now, I think I'd rather chip that guard and roll under. It's probably a better result, yes. Tougher call to make though, but if they ever get the right weight, you know, get close to that guard, they may be able to even flip and roll underneath that center. So lots of good options here. Throw the right weight, and you've got a chance to make a shot. Good spot. Chelsea again going with the um, aggressive play of a nice soft little roll underneath, which is by far the best result. She also could just, um, at this point, just remove this rock and uh, with more of an, an upweight shot, which would give a draw option for Team Kadoran, but um, would be a more straightforward call. They are sweeping hard. This is coming towards the center guard. Looks very close. Great what shot. a shot. Unbelievable shot by Sarah Wilkes and a, really a team shot. Great sweep and line call by Chelsea. So for Joanne Curtis, she's going to have to play a hit on that stone top four, but just half in the top four. Probably sees about two thirds of that stone. So the roll underneath is going to be difficult here. So, you know, you'd really love to get the roll under the corner. This is curling. Yeah, that was what they were trying. It just, just moved a little bit too much on them. Still a good shot though. Um, they punched it all the way out and, and there is room to make this little hit and roll that Chelsea's yeah, calling, exactly. but the jam's in play. And it's fairly near the guard. It's not a not a give me shot. Okay. Okay. Halfway there. Okay. You got it. 
Chelsea just checking in with her sweepers on uh, the right weight to throw here. You know, six feet of weight is the difference between it running straight and jamming in the back and it curling up enough and making that roll underneath. Got a curl here. This is not going to be what she's looking for. And there you go. Opportunity Kadoran. Blues are actually lying one, so they don't even have to hit the yellow one. They might choose to, but they could also just draw around the center guard. That back rock uh, in the back eight foot is probably about half buried as well, so um, three's actually still in play here. Yeah, definitely. Jerry's already marked it up, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Not quite yet, but for uh, you know Chrissy and her team, keeping it open, leaving lots of room to uh, to score here. You know, I think this is what we're going to see a lot more teams playing with the hammer. And, and to be honest, I really think this is how you should be playing with the hammer. Yeah, no, I think the patient approach with the hammer. Um, you know, well, we'll see. We'll see how this finishes out. But it looks like it's going to work two ends in a row here for them, both in four, and and they have the opportunity at least in six. So. Again, as usual, it always comes down to execution. Chrissy Gidorn in the hack here with her first in six, trailing by two, but a great opportunity to put two or even three points up on the board. This is moving early. It looks like she's going to have lots of room here. Right up, guys. Hard, hard. 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 No. Spoke too soon. Light is really the problem with that shot at the end of the day. For sure. by Chelsea here to come to the back and maybe just tap to lie two. A little bit tricky though as uh, this is kind of one of these shots. This is how you should be playing the backing. You put the broom down. If you're a little heavy, the straighter line will take you to the back stone. If you end up curling like you expect it might with T-line weight, you'll fully bury underneath the guards. For sure, no, definitely a, a good combo shot. Uh. For Chelsea here, she's definitely looking to be to the back one. Yeah, yes. she's playing a very soft hit. Stay close. I'm close. Close. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh. Line looks good. This should curl up enough. Punches it back into the 12 foot. Now lying two. Draw here against two for a single point.
Last shot of the end here on its way. Little draw with backing. Looks like Chrissy's uh, made the adjustment here. Thrown a fair bit more weight. The line should be okay. And there it is, single point here for Chrissy Kadoran. They cut the gap to one, trailing 5-4 to Chelsea Carey here after six ends at the 2018 Canad Inns Curling Classic. We'll be back after a quick look at our uh, all our sponsors, all the uh, people who have helped us out here this week making this uh, great event. And we're back here at the beautiful Portage Curling Club in Portage La Prairie, Manitoba. This is the 2018 Canada Inns Women's Classic. Jason Gundlickson, Jerry Gertz here calling. The game here between Chrissy Kadoran and Chelsea Carey. Carey up, up one, playing seven with the hammer. Looking to just control the play here. Yeah, Team Kadoran's going with a nice guard, center guard here to try and... Uh, Try and force some action. You can expect to see Carey go open side again. Maybe the tick shot. Yeah, going open side again. Or is that the tick shot ice? Come with that same open side shot that uh, was called two ends ago. Team Fujisawa and Team Muirhead are locked in an unbelievable battle. Um, Fujisawa just made a beautiful double takeout to get a deuce back in six to take a one point lead. They've kind of been leapfrogging back and forth across each other on the scoreboard. So now playing seven here, Kadorn's going to ignore that open stone. Quick update on sheet one, Laura Burtnick right stole one to take a four to two lead playing the sixth end against Team Vachon. Nice guard played and now Team Carey will go around the double center guard to the top of the eight foot one of those things where if you, if you can't uh, can't keep the middle open be the first one to the top of the uh, eight foot four foot area on sheet seven in the uh, a side battle team Anderson stole one to take a six to five lead on team Jim playing the seventh end Team from Korea has the hammer. Uh, Brianne's draw has uh, slid a little bit too far and a great opportunity now for Team Kadoran to uh, apply some pressure without the hammer in this crucial seventh end of our A semi-final. I think that's a situation where Brianne just overcompensated a little too much the right way. You know, you definitely don't want to be short in that position. And unfortunately, uh, she slid that through the rings. Yeah, for sure. And she's been throwing a lot of those draws out to the wings here, uh, you know, which may have a different speed than down the middle. And uh, a little bit, a little bit more curl. You're definitely going to have to throw it a little bit harder to uh, to get it that distance. Yeah, and just kind of 
overthrew it, but as Jerry mentioned, a center guard would have been a positive for Team Kadoran, so that shot uh, is definitely the way you want to uh, miss if you can't be perfect on it, and um, this looks like a nice little shot around the center guard, though. Julia Weagle with a, a very, very nice shot to the top of the forefoot, uh, and Chelsea right away recognizing that um, this ends up playing exactly how they want to, and we're going to go smash some center guards here for Dana's uh, first shot. As you heard out of Dana's mouth, a little wide on this one. One of the best things about commentating Dana's games, you don't actually have to say anything, she does it for you. <laughs> Gets the top guard, still a good shot. Yeah, very nice shot, and uh, any time that uh, you know you, you peel the guard, they're forced to replace it. Uh, you're, you're, you're not maybe moving forward in the end, but you're not moving backward either, so always a good shot. So we do have an update on our feature game uh, next. That'll be uh, USA's Nina Roth taking on Penny Barker of Saskatchewan. Oh, fantastic match up there. Nina Roth was the, uh, the Olympic representative uh, last year for the uh, United States, and uh, they've been going along here good in this event. That's a, a B-side quarter nine. final. I'd have to check the bracket to be sure. Uh, Penny Barker... Uh, 2017 Saskatchewan uh, women's champion. Left a little bit of a port there. I mean, the center guard is still valuable and will will be used, I'm sure, at a later date. But Chelsea's realizing that top four rock is in prime position, and she'd like to move that. The bonus here is you throw a bit of weight at this. If it ever curls and ticks the center guard, you might make a little cheap uh, double peel on the top at the same time. For sure. Jerry just wants to see another tick ticking through here in this game. <laughs> we only had two, man. Take it easy. Now you got to put some pressure on your opponents here. You can't just leave them options where you throw it at an inch wide or an inch tight. You're, uh, you're still good. In least shocking news ever, Dana Ferguson makes another hit and roll. And um, that rocks nicely in the top four foot. I really like how Kadoran's approaching this uh, seventh end. Um, we were talking maybe about getting that approach in the fifth end where they, they kept a little more passive but got their force. But in, in seven, they're realizing that uh, the time for aggression is now and they're, they're really making some great calls here to set up a potential steal. Yeah, that stone uh, Chelsea has top four looks good for carry right now, but that's also a stone for Kadoran to, to use. Make a good shot here, tap it back, a rock or two, and uh, now Kadoran starts to get a chance to generate a steal here. Looks close, off and on sweep. Beautiful freeze there. Third, Joanne Curtis. And now um, yeah. we're going to look for a double peel from Sarah Wilkes, the third from Team Chelsea Carey. That's a perfect strike. She could even Yahtzee all three blues. Oh, yep. oh. Big weight here out of Sarah Wilkes. Oh, oh. Yep, yep, yep. One. Oh, stuffs it on the other guard. Still gets rid of the top center that was protecting the uh, frozen Kadoran stone. Curtis wisely goes down to the other end. Uh, definitely sounded like there was different thoughts between the front end and the third and the skip. Maybe all three had different uh, different thoughts on this shot. So let's get on the same page here. This is an opportunity to uh, get back in the game. Well, we were thinking if we put up another guard, it gives them another opportunity to do the double peel. Then we, we don't have anything. 
If we come here, if we come here again, is that awful? Well, that's what I was thinking. Like, even if you angle through it, you can yeah. angle through this way or that way. I don't feel like that's that bad. Okay. So essentially just the same shot then. And then if I'm here, it's okay? Yeah. Okay, I mean, like, this is fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say here is better than creating separation. Yeah. Okay. Just here. They've talked it through and uh, they're choosing a, another to just follow with another freeze. So, I mean, the positive of that is that it's the same you know, shot you just bad. threw. Why don't we just do this? This is fine. Play this. Yeah, Chrissy definitely has a, a much more defensive mindset than her team does. One thing, though, the new five rock rule, getting a force here and then trying to play for three in the final end is not a bad strategy either. No, but if you wanted to play it for a force, I think you could even um, just go around your tight corner guard into the forefoot and, yeah. um, you know, achieve that goal with 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 more uh, steel upside, potentially. Yeah, I think um, uh, we're on the same page here. I love the draw around that guard. I think Chrissy was looking at trying to get something behind the guard with the hit. Yeah. But it's so much easier to put the rock there with the draw and then it sets up a lot of opportunities where Chelsea's going to have to be pretty fine with uh, with her shots in order to uh, not give up a steal or get into some trouble. For sure, and, and anything on that draw shot, anything light from a foot over the hog line to any center guard is one of the other calls. This hit... Uh, Unfortunately, it just doesn't do anything for you, I don't think. I think it's just too defensive for this line score. I mean, if they're up one, I love it, but... Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah not trying to maximize the pressure that they put on the carry squad. Probably why they're playing in this event though is to play those higher ranked teams and 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 then kind of, you know, learn learn some things from those uh, those opportunities. Yeah, with their struggles this season, it wouldn't surprise me to see see them it doesn't surprise me to see them be a little gun shy right now. Hits and stays in the back. Kadorn lying second and third shot right now. This is a great lesson for any uh, any players. But well, I mean, who aren't skipping? Uh, when you've got a combo shot like drag? this, see where it is. See where you actually want to hit the rock. Um, it's sometimes tough with peels okay. to commit to just throwing the exact way the way at the broom. Um, you also kind of want to know what what your uh, margin of error here. And anything on the high side here will uh, will probably result in a good shot. Yeah, you hit this the right way. You might be able to make both blues go away. Just got caught in between a little bit there on that shot. Yeah, very good opportunity. A nose hit would uh, really start to close that scoring area down. Just a quick update from sheet five here. Uh, Team Spencer hasn't scored many ends, but another three-ender 
um, yields an 8 to 3 lead here without Hammer playing the sixth end of play against Team Ashley Howard. We've had lots of rocks in play in that game. I think, uh, you know, Barb's been uh, shooting for the big score. Now, uh, again, uh, lying too buried underneath guards. Yeah, they're coming off a week where they won uh, on the Manitoba Curling Tour last week, so they're probably feeling a lot of confidence after a slow start here this week. Dead on the nose and a really nice, uh, nice little setup here now for uh, Team Gidorn. a thin double here that could lead to a triple. Um, tough shot because you got to fully commit to almost missing the rock uh, to make it perfectly. Another option maybe just uh, hitting the back and rolling in, potentially making that back double. Because with that one point lead and hammer, even a steal of one here is not the end of the world. Um, might be just as preferable as getting one, honestly, with the five rock free guard zone. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty close. You're looking at uh, in the women's game in the Grand Slams the last few years, uh, down two with has won about 20% of the time, uh, tied uh, without has won about 25% of the time. Yeah, you definitely see in the men's game where people are even preferring that two down, but in the women's game, I agree, the two up is better. Yeah, I think they're wrong in the men's game, too. No. <laughs> being tied is better. All right. Or sorry, uh, being being up uh, up to is better than tied. Sorry. Yeah. But they're definitely very very close in the men's game. Yes. You know, I think at the end of the day, it comes down to preference. You're talking about you know a few percentage points uh, difference. Yeah. I think it's I think a little bit on ice conditions too. Yeah. When the ice gets absolutely perfect, uh, that two down might be more more the way to go, but uh, so a little, it's a little tricky out there. A little bit of a break there for Kador, and they just feather the top one and then stick on the back one. Looks like Kadorn's line one with uh, Kerry Stone in the back as second shot. You ever just play this? This is Kadoran's last shot here. Really, she wants to put some pressure on Carrie and make her face two somehow. So they're looking at this hit here. You know, you could draw around that center, try and, you know, go full forefoot, maybe bite top of the button, show a quarter, maybe maybe show half. This is another way to do it. You're, gonna, you're going to force Carrie into a, a hit against two here if you can make a good shot maybe even against three for sure this is uh so does carrie draw in that situation or does she play some sort of a hit and roll yeah, i think it really depends exactly where they uh they line up I mean, the shoe's going to get out of the way of the draw of the button path so yeah she's gonna might... she's gonna have the nose hit on the back one but it's going to be a little bit of a dicey hit you know you yeah. have to stick or you might give up a steal of one or even two maybe the problem with this is they're hitting their shot rock Got inside on that one. It overcurled on them. To a pretty sneaky good spot, though. Uh, it doesn't look like that hit's going to be for two very often. They can't roll inside, or they'll jam on the back, and uh, and they. So uh, Chelsea actually thinks uh, Kadoran is line two right now. It's close. Take a look. 
It's a very interesting situation, though, because Kadoran clearly thought that uh, Chelsea was second shot, or else she would have just drawn in line three. So um, the fact that now Chelsea's not sure, it, it, that's an interesting situation. Why well, I hope that one day the technology increases the point where, um, especially at least in televised matches, they can uh, measure those rocks mid-end so teams get to make uh, you know, fully informed decisions and, and not rely on the... Uh, the whim of the uh, exact how the rings have been drawn to determine uh, results of curling games. Well, you got to make sure you got w at least one person on your team with perfect 2020 eyesight and uh, the ability to figure these things out. For sure. I think the Chelsea is going to end up leading towards just ripping um, the shot blue rock out. Like that's that's the real thing here. Giving up a steal of one is fine here. You absolutely cannot give up more than one though. No. So, you know, you, like you're saying, peel out the top, go to the measure, and see what happens. And then either result is uh, is acceptable. Yeah, that sounds like uh, Jerry's letting us know that you're 75% plus to win if, uh, you know, either if you're tied with or, uh, or two up without. So that'll be the decision in the end. Quick little update on sheet eight. Uh, team Varnes with a single to take a 6-5 lead on Team Barber. And Muirhead does it again with a deuce in seven to leapfrog back over Fujisawa and a 7-6 lead coming home, playing the eighth end there in that A semifinal. Gary thinks it's Gadoran and Gadoran thinks it's Kerry, so <laughs> we'll see what result we get when we come back here after a quick uh, word from the sponsors. Eat. Meet. Stay. Play! Can Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inns. Call today at one 33 canad or visit us right now at canadins.com. And we're back here at the 2018 Canad Inns Women's Classic. Just in time for the measure. The giant protractor thing that you see up on the old screen. I think at the Olympics that might have been as famous as the curling games. Just people were enamored with this, with this measuring tool. It had its own little little news cycle. So we didn't quite get an indication of who scored there, but we'll soon find out based on who goes first. Fans behind us are suggesting blue was counting, so... And there it is, a steal for Team Kadoran. We're all tied up, heading to eight. Fantastic finish here. Still, at the end of the day, I think that was the right decision for Carey. You really couldn't get into any kind of trouble. No, I think that, I think there really wasn't much choice. Um, they could have played a softer way, try and hit, but if you ever crossed it, it could be a lead to a deuce. Steal of two. So we're about to get started here. Laura Labonte, first stone, looking for either the high guard or the tight guard. Yeah, this is one of the uh, one of the big moments where leads. Uh, you know, ha have a real, what could be considered a pressure shot. You only get two free guard shots here, and you got to make sure you put uh, put two good ones in play to give your team the best chance they can of this steal. Again. 
So quick update, uh, Muirhead Fujisawa, Eve Muirhead uh, with two in the seventh end, sitting top eight, looking to throw up a center guard to protect it. Fujisawa does have one buried around a corner guard in the back 12 foot. Uh, so uh, Muirhead is, uh, needs to make a good shot here. Beautiful tight guard on our uh, feature sheet there by Laura Labonte. Team Carey's not going with the tick strategy. Um, probably somewhat caused by uh, having a spare in at lead. They might not have the reps uh, to feel comfortable taking that shot on. They're going to go with Brianne Shaw right to the top four foot. Looking good here as it comes into the house. Speed. Half in the four here is perfect. Stands up perfectly all through these games. Uh, just fantastic ice by head ace maker Greg Owasco and his crew here at the Canet Inns Women's Classic. Team Jim uh, was forced to uh, forced to one and seven in that uh, matchup with Team Einerson. So Einerson tied with the Hammer playing eight over on sheet seven. Great judge here by the sweepers. Right of the hand, uh, they called it was just a touch heavy into a two position, uh, which means about halfway between the hog line and the house, and that's exactly where it finished up. Double peel's not bad now. Very interesting decision, decision for Chelsea Carey here. Um, the double peel is quite makeable, so they don't want to put this rock in, in a place that makes that double peel harder. This this might be one of the rare times where, even though they plan to throw two in the house, you could just chuck it through because uh, um, this rock could, could likely uh, jam. Yeah, there's a lot of ways this can go wrong and, and kind of mess up the layout you got. And really none that, that, that you really, really love that much. Yeah, you could, you, you know, you could make the perfect nose freeze to it and it does make it a little bit tougher. But, uh, you know, that risk of that bounce is uh, not good. And this is, this is a little heavy here. It's holding out. Nice little, like, really good pair from Brianne there. Uh, the angle, though, it does leave, it does leave something that Kadoran could draw around later. For sure, lots of opportunity here for, for the steal. The other challenge with this double peel is, is if you ever get it a hair close to nose, you, you might run it in under your own stones in the forefoot as well. It's going to be interesting down the stretch here. Over on sheet five, we've got all the rocks in play, it looks like, yet again. Ashley Howard lining up a uh, 15, 20 foot. Uh, run back for it looks like a potential four yeah i, th I think uh this is actually interesting i think they, they actually yeah have a couple different shots they have a, they have a run back for four run back for five it'll just be which one they decide to play Beautiful center guard on our feature sheet put up, and Dana Ferguson will be asked to play a um, peel shot. Oof. Oh, she touches that top one. She good chance they all get moving and move them off the center. So the question is, is she could. Should Kadoran be continuing to guard her pair up front? Or do you think she should try and, and play something back four around the uh, middle? I really, this is a very hard guard to throw, but seeing Julia just threw it, I like the idea of maybe going one more time with the same player and then um, switching to that outturn draw to the back of the button, potentially um, on your next one. The key here is lots of separation so that the double peel, triple peel up front isn't uh, so easy. 
No, exactly. And directly in front, so there's less angle, and that's exactly what they get. And Yeah, that's a better shot this time out of, out of Julia. Just two fantastic shots, and really, like, they look easy. It's just a nice high guard, but that is a hard, hard, hard shot. You hog it, and, I mean, you make obviously clearly make a zero. And and if you, like, you look like a goof. And if you throw it close to your other one, effectively, you might as well not have thrown it either. So exactly. just, just a great shot, a great pair of shots. Yeah, and that's a spot you're not normally used to throwing a stone at the same time too exactly especially with this beautiful quick ice and uh you know you got to really kick out light and uh still deal with all the curl through a sharp release and throw at a perfect spot as jerry had kind of That's mentioned i think we're getting close to um gear changing times here from team kadoran but uh they're gonna go with one more center We have a final on sheet three with Team China beating Team Sherry Anderson. China will await the winner of this game in the A qualifier. The other A qualifier game looks like we're lining up Looking for an update on that. Potentially a Team Einerson, a Team Fujisawa right now, but both are in battles and uh, easily Muirhead or Gim could uh, pull off the uh, victory here. Here they've brought in that high center guard a little tighter, and now uh, there's an opportunity for Sarah Wilkes to get all these blues in the middle moving. It's a big uh, turning point shot here. Nope. The one nope. challenge here. Looks like the angles, though, will set that blue stone straight back. Yeah. She oh. just got the top one there. I think she's better off not uh, making contact with that angle the way that was left. That looked like it was almost a natural straight back with the third stone. And then that would not have been ideal for uh, Carey to kind of leave a Kadoran stone sitting in a good spot. For sure. Still uh, going with the high center guard. Even though Chelsea's in, in a normal defensive situation, there's a point where she will uh, just switch gears and uh, put a nice draw in there and, and basically give uh, Team Kadoran no, op no way in for, uh, to get shot rock. Yeah, I think I like this for Carrie on her next one is to try and go top four. Team Laura Burdnick um, finished off a victory here on sheet one over Team Vachon, and they'll be moving on in the C bracket. In, uh, on sheet seven in the other ace semi, Team Anderson has everything clear and the complete empty sheet playing third rocks in the uh, in the tied last end, so a great situation for them. Team Fujisawa is building a, uh, they only need a deuce to win, but they're building a massive end uh, and uh, Eve Mirad's gonna have to make a beautiful draw on one of her last two to uh, prevent a big end and the victory for the Japanese squad. Yeah, Fujisawa sitting four currently around the edges. Two of them throw, in the eight foot, uh, okay. sort of sitting at uh, one <laughs> o'clock so and uh, three o'clock underneath the guard. So yeah, tr definitely uh, uh, trouble for Muirhead at this moment. Just wicked the, the double peel there and only got the high one off and kind of left uh, left a shot that that somewhat blocks the um, in turn draw to the button path for Team Carry here. So the patience is uh, again paying off for Team Kadoran, and they're looking for a nice back button back forward draw around these staggered yellows in the top of the house. This is the kind of shot that on normal curling club ice or, or normal straighter ice um, isn't really possible. But here, if you match the right line and weight, you can. Uh, almost dead bury behind a rock that's in the forefoot. Yeah, you're perfectly fine taking this uh, full back four, even if you're uh, shot uh, half in the back four. You'll force Carey to have to chase you around, and, and uh, you may find yourself getting a break there. Got to hold this out there early. This ice will swing.
Oh, this looks like a beauty. Tight around. That's oh. close. <laughs> what a shot. <laughs> what a shot. Absolute beauty of a shot there. And now that staggered yellow guard on the top of the eight foot there. Yeah, back to Brienne's uh, second shot that was, uh, you know, pretty close to perfect. But uh, right now they're wishing they, they hadn't uh, put that rock there. Quick update on sheet eight, um, playing the extra end. Team Varnes has the hammer against Team Barber. This could be a wild shot. So probably a, about a half rock strike on the high side could uh, could lead to all the rocks in, that are touching the center line moving. They hit this right, there might be a bit of drag pulling the yellow stone that's biting or half in the top four. Maybe make contact with the blue stone. Yeah, this it's definitely queued up where there's a, there's a massive shot. Chelsea leans on Sarah sometimes um, with a lot of ex experience as a, as a vice. Uh, she definitely uh, leans on her a little bit for strategy as well. She had a discussion with Dana and they're going to they're take a look. You could promote the, uh, the yellow stag or you could tap the yellow, move it close to the button and try and bounce off and leave yourself a little angle run on both sides of the center line. You know, I think I like this shot better. It actually opens up the blue blue, yellow straight run at the same time too. Exactly, you potentially uh, build three shots for yourself, uh, which which could be pretty powerful. If you ever get by, you could sit shot here. If you tick and roll over, you can give yourself a potential in off for the, to remove the uh, blue one. And then if you click it a little harder, you then give yourself a little angle running at it as well. For sure. Gotta throw the right weight here. It's really all about the right weight. Really like this call, and Chelsea's right. You. Yeah, we don't want it to sit there again. Yeah. Taking back eight at least. We can back lines. Yeah, I think back lines fine. Yeah, just to make sure we get a little off. I agree. It's easier to call the line a little with that, I think. Yeah. 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 We have three crazy finishes here on our A-side semis, all happening at the exact same time as Chelsea Art. Carey plays Art. a nice, delicate split here really with her first. Where? Whoa! 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 Close! No! Whoa! No! Whoa! Has to make contact with the top. Or just miss it. No, 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 no. That's not good enough. Just a wee bit too much weight, and uh, this is a tough situation now. Man, you just throw up a high guard there. Anywhere in the way, and I don't think Chelsea has a shot. It's not going to be an easy one, that's for sure.
Fujisawa with a hit and stick for four and a 10-7 victory over Team Muirhead. At the same time, Team Einerson made a nice hit and stick on their last to get a 8-6 victory over Team Gim. So uh, I believe one of the A qualifiers will be covered uh, ton later tonight. So I would expect to see Anderson Muirhead uh, for the last draw later this evening uh, for our coverage, and that one's going to be a doozy. Well, for sure. I, I think that... Uh, Sorry, uh, Anderson Fujisawa. Yeah, I'd like, like to, I'd like to uh, see the, the teams <laughs> in the same bracket, <laughs> but no, buddy. That's going to be... Uh, that would be the game that we'd love to, uh, love to get to watch. And, uh, you know, that'll be uh, the late draw here. Perfect time back in uh, Japan for uh, fans to pick up uh, some morning curling action. Beautiful. Big shot here to throw a guard. They really have to make sure they don't make it easier. Right now, it is extremely difficult for Team Carey. A uh, poor guard could actually make an easier shot for Team Carey, and you don't want to do that uh, yeah. this late in the match. You got to leave this high and or close enough to the middle. This is just got to just gotta let this stop. Looks like that's a good placement. Good luck, Chelsea Carey. That might be there. That's like just the blue that they threw onto the onto Shot Rock. Yeah. If it's there, it's a whisker. Yeah. Almost knows. And again, good guard, exactly where they called, but. I would say if this is possible, which it looks like by the fact they're playing it, it is. Um, this is an easier shot than they had before the uh, Kadoran team threw. For, yeah, probably. I think the only other option was had Kadoran not thrown, I think Chelsea could have thrown like a back button draw. Yeah, perfect just draw to the button. Try and get to the, get to the, you know, three quarters of it, half of it, tap it back, enough to sit for shot. Still, very tough shot here for uh, for Carey. Last stone. Canada ends women's semifinal, a qualifier semifinal. Very good throw, but it'll be a steal of one for Team Kadoran, and they book their ticket into the A side qualifier tonight at 8:30. Just kind of a patient grind all the way through for uh, Team Kadoran. They uh, they used their hammer well, and then uh, when they had to get a steal in uh, in seven, they they the strategy of just making sure they they set up multiple stones lying around to get the steal, and then here in in eight, really well played end by uh, Team Kadoran. For sure, they played a really great eighth end, and uh, that that was the difference. Uh, Team Carey kind of set up a stagger, and uh, when, when Kadoran's team tied, decided to go in, they made an absolutely perfect shot, and that led to the steal point. So make that a four-game winning streak now for Team Kadoran. And a 6-5 victory over Team Carey here in the A semifinal at Canad Inn's Women's Classic. We'll be back on the air at 5 p.m. Take care, and uh, have a great uh, afternoon, everyone.